Hi traders and welcome to the technical analysis market wrap on Friday the 25th of February. So wow, we have seen some serious action this week. The um, the VIX has gone through the roof. We're going to have a very quick look at the VIX first actually today to just show you what uh, can actually happen once we've got uh, instability in the markets and probably my thoughts on how to use it in terms of trading as well. So we'll jump straight into the charts and we'll go straight to the VIX actually. Uh, this is the uh, daily chart on the VIX. You can see here that we've got a massive spike uh, that went all the way to that 33 or, or close enough, basically 33 on the dot. Look, anything over 20 and we, yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of volatility. One thing about the VIX that a lot of people misinterpret is that it doesn't necessarily uh, determine a direction. Okay, so just because it's actually spiking, it doesn't mean the market's actually going to drop. Sometimes the spike can actually... Uh, mean that the market goes up very very quickly all it does it's a it is called a fear index but but realistically it doesn't actually indicate that it's actually the market's definitely going short so you need to bear that in mind but what you do know for sure if the if the vix starts to spike especially once it gets over 25 is that you are starting to see a very very big uh, volatile move in the market in some way shape or form now a lot of people say uh, that they do technicals on the VIX. I personally don't believe that technicals actually work on the VIX. We know a level, uh, but a level is not really a technical, right? The level is actually just a stable point where the market is behaving, even under 20, actually. Uh, that, all that is is indicating a stable market. But if we look at moving average crossovers and support and resistance and all that sort of thing, it doesn't really make as much sense uh, on the VIX because realistically, uh, we can't, like technical analysis news event, okay? So, yeah, the VIX only spikes. It, it, the VIX very rarely reacts to um, fundamental news or anything like that. It's generally a, a black swan event or something that is out of the ordinary. So always keep that in mind that, you know, if, if you are looking at the VIX, look at it at, at levels and price more than uh, anything else. Don't be too caught up on the technicals thinking, well, it's a double bottom. This must be going soon because that's actually not the case. Okay, so very, very important to remember that. But just know that when it is uh, moving, especially when it gets above uh, the 25 area and especially above 30, uh, the market is extraordinarily volatile. And in a lot of ways that actually, it's almost an indicator to actually stay out of the market more than it is to actually get in it, to be honest, because I think as we're going to see very shortly in some of these charts, it's extraordinarily difficult to trade in this type of trading environment, unless you're absolutely short scalping really, really hard. So anyway, you can see a very big, um, you know, re, uh, test down to underneath the 30 level again, 28.50 at the moment, got to the highest 33. Obviously a fair bit of calm has returned to the market after that big volatility spike, but of course it's basically run rampant on the chart. So let's go back to our normal analysis and we'll see how it has affected some of the majors that we look at and also some of the key indices. So over to the Aussie USD first. Look, this one we've had, you know, we had obviously a very big sell-off, got down to the, um, basically the 71 or close enough, just below the 71 level on the Aussie. Like we talked about last week, it played out really uh, nicely for us. We were talking about the long to the top of the channel, uh, played out literally to the pip, so the 78 um, or the 7280 area, which is where we targeted, uh, got touched, so you should have been able to get hold of that one. It gave us plenty of movement uh, before the craziness started. And again, it's a really good sign. You know, once you know you've got a very strong uh, role reversal zone, which this one is, you know, you've got support there and the resistance there. It was always going to provide a barrier unless the, the market momentum was running um, at a the rate of knots, which wasn't you know, obviously happening on the Aussie USD. It touched it and sold off. So great level to take, you take your profit. Uh, getting into the short might have been a different story because it did reverse off there fairly quickly. Like you can see on the four hour, it just went bang. Um, and you can see even on the one hour, it literally dropped down without any pullback whatsoever. So unless you're actually trading that absolute drop, and even on a 15 minute, you just didn't really get an entry unless you're actually scalping the, the pullback to the 20 moving average. So the only way you would have got this is if you're actually trading that session. If you were trading that session, it was perfect. Because I mean, you could see here that you've got the pull, first pullback there, second pullback, third pullback, and all these little mini pullbacks all the way down this level. I'm not saying you would have shorted it to here, but yeah, the 7140 was the place you would have been going for because that's obviously the bottom of the channel. So if you were on a very, very short, uh, small time frame and you were trading that particular uh, instance, because it's not a big um, period of time, you know, you would have been fine. You would have got some really good trading. But if you were looking at the, yeah, sort of medium term view and you and you missed that whole trading session, very difficult to get in on a one hour and a four hour. But, you know, you should have taken profit there. And hopefully if you get a bit of a bounce here off the support level, uh, you can see we've had a big, big retrace now. It's probably going to float around in here. We've got two very distinct targets. Both of them have proven themselves in the volatile market now. And until again, we get a close either below this level here 
or above the 7280 or 73. Uh, we're not taking any long positions, but you can certainly scalp in between. So hopefully you're able to catch some of that move up into the um, the 7280. And if you were fortunate enough to trade that session on the 15 minute chart, you should have been able to get some good shorts as well. All right, over to the US dollar CAD. Uh, this one, look, it did break through the uh, resistance level that we had here, that we have posted. You can see now it's pulled all the way back through to the key level. We know this is a very, very important zone. The 128, we've been talking about it forever. Uh, very, very important. It did look like, you know, for all intents and purposes, it looked like it was going to smash it yesterday. But because the VIX has dropped now, yeah, a lot of the uh, markets have started to stabilize a little bit and, and recoup some of their, their big moves throughout the US session. You can see this is pulled back in sync and in sympathy with it. So... You know, if we get a close around this level here, it's going to appear to be a, a bit of a failure of this break. But, you know, I, I factored that in that, you know, we, we saw an unprecedented event this week. And, you know, a lot of these moves, you're going to kind of have to ignore them a little bit. I wouldn't be using them as gospel as a level that uh, it should have closed at. Yeah, this is no surprise to see it back here, given that it actually moved on. Yeah, on that news, it moved on uh, an invasion uh, and yeah, it, it's uh, it certainly pulled back accordingly. So... I'm just going to say that the, the 128 is held up again. Uh, it's proven to be a strong resistance level, but I'm not paying a lot of attention to the fact that it did. So what I'm and what I mean by that is, if it does happen to creep higher and close above the 128 on a daily chart, I'm not going to say that this is a fail point. That's probably what I'm trying to get at. I'm not saying it failed because of a technical level. It failed because. The, uh, the markets reversed everywhere. It wasn't because this reached a critical zone, okay? So what that means is, if we do get a close above the 128 on a daily chart, I'm not going to be afraid of this level because this level closed and I pulled back from it prematurely, if you like. So that's what I'm trying to get at there. You can kind of ignore that big wick. So we're still waiting for this break, in other words. If we get a break above this level, happy days. If it does start to reverse from here and we get a series of lower highs and lower lows on a smaller time frame, we can look at shorting it back down to that 120. 650, which is the bottom of this congestion channel uh, and this zone. But again, the preferred trade is still on the way up here because I think that the um, momentum is still strong for the upside. All the moving averages are behind us. The 20 has been really good support for it. So it gives us more ammunition to go long than it does to go short, but you can play both ways just depending on what price action does. All right, uh, US dollar yen. Uh, this is an interesting one. Did absolutely nothing throughout all of that volatile period and then all of a sudden uh, started to rise again. So still holding relatively strong, but not really uh, exciting. It hasn't been an exciting trade for a little bit, really. It's been stuck in this uh, tight range, effectively a tight range for, for the yen, really. Now, right as it stands, it's at the 115.50. Uh, obviously a very, very important uh, reversal point. It's, it, it is resistance, no question about that. Two very uh, recent points of resistance. If it does break past this and closes above the, the 1550, the 115.50, uh, you can start targeting the, the previous high of the 116.30 to 40 area, uh, it could get there fairly easily. Now that it has moved and kicked off the 50 and the 20 moving average, you could see it probably getting there maybe a little bit quicker than you actually think. So, you know, definitely one to target. It needs to close below the moving averages to get me excited for the short where we would be targeting the 114 again. Uh, it doesn't look like doing that, even though, yeah, that candle was a bit ugly at one point throughout the session. Uh, you can see it's quite strong now. So depending on, yeah, it, it's amazing. It didn't do much this week. Uh, that's very, very mindful that everything else was uh, moving all over the place. And you can see the two or three candles previous to the to the big one on the last session were very small, narrow ranged, and basically caught between the two moving averages, which is a, a very tight range for this one to be in. So, you know, the, the one we need to be looking for, we want to be targeting a, a break above the one the 115.50. If we get a break above that, we can start aiming towards the, uh, the previous highs. Okay, so that's how we're going to play the yen. Okay, let's move on now to the US dollar index, um, as you can see, dollar index, uh, big, big, big rejection. Like I said, yesterday uh, throughout the US session, this was looking very, very strong. Obviously, uh, it's pulled back in sync with everything else. Uh, it's Again, it's one of those ones that I'm going to ignore this week, mainly because of, well, we know why it happened. Uh, it's at that point of resistance again. Uh, it's pulled back to it, but I'm not going to be saying that this is a big, massive rejection and yeah, price told the story. We know that's not the case. So treat it very similar to the CAD in the sense that if we do get a close above the 97 on a daily chart, we're going to look at that at a fairly bullish um, way. Okay, We want to be looking at that and ignoring what has happened here and say, well, it's pushing the resistance and closed above the resistance. 
Again, in a normal market uh, that didn't have uh, an unprecedented event, I would say that's a big failure. And I would be very, very conscious that that level failed and it's not likely to probably b blast through there. So I'd be taking a lot of uh, long positions with trepidation, knowing that it can fail there. I'm going to ignore that. If we get a close above the 97, happy days. We start to look for the long opportunities or the short opportunities on the euro, of course. And, um, and if it fails from here and continues to sell off, then we can say that this technical level, uh, which is a resistance level, has held up and then the technicals are starting to play the game. So that's how we're going to look at that one. Of course, the euro is the one we're, we're talking about in terms of the trading. Uh, you can see here, though, that although the, um, the, the support line is right through this level here at the 112.50, it is still well and truly broken. Even though it did have a big retrace, it has definitely broken. And if we do get a continued weakness on a smaller time frame, and by that I mean maybe dropping down to a one hour, you can see um, here that it's already pulled back to the 20 moving average. If we see this rollover is already starting to kick in, so if we start to see weakness here and we get a series of um, yeah lower highs and lower lows on a 15 minute chart from this level, you can see this is what it is. The same same point, of course. If we get a series of lower highs and lower lows on a 15 minute chart and it breaks these uh, moving averages down, that's going to bode well for that 20 moving average to be the uh, the mainstay for the one hour and you could be looking at shorting it to the previous lows again to around that 1 11 20 area so not a bad trade on the euro actually uh it's probably one that uh is the cleanest so keep an eye on that one if you see that rollover on the 15 that's going to kick in the rollover on the on the one hour if that 20 moving average holds over and we start to see a few more lows uh it gives us an opportunity to potentially short it down to here without a lot of trouble in front of us all right let's move on to the big one we'll have a quick look at the uh, us 500 Again, not a lot to say here, except that obviously it tried to break that key level, would have done it spectacularly if it didn't reverse. Uh, it's trying to kick back now. The problem with trying to trade these markets uh, when they are very, very volatile like this, and this is why I said the VIX uh, being above 30 is actually more of a warning to stay up than, than it is to actually a signal to trade is that it makes it very difficult to trade. If you're not you know, right in the in the zone in the smaller time frames, it does make it very, very difficult to actually get moves. And the problem is stop losses don't make as much sense, right? The market moves very, very uh, quickly, very wildly. So you need bigger stop losses generally, and that doesn't even guarantee that they're not going to get hit. So it kind of takes away uh, from the essence of what we're trying to achieve with technical analysis, which is stable markets with uh, good take profit and stop loss zones. All those kind of go out the window when you've got a very volatile and uh, crazy market that's moving, you know, big, big moves either side. So, so to me, I would prefer to wait and let the market settle itself down a little bit. Now, if we get a few more days of, you know, building consolidation around this level, we know that it's a pretty good role reversal zone with resistance there, support there, support there. And if we get it there and we start to see a series of higher highs and higher lows on a four hour, then we can say that the market's starting to stable and we can potentially enter that trade. So it's one of those ones where you really want to let it stabilize a little bit. If you're going to scalp, my advice is definitely to keep the scalps really, really short and sharp. I think that's probably the most important thing when you are trading these markets. Uh, when they are really, really volatile, go to the smaller time frames, keep a really close eye on where your stop loss and take profits are, and don't expect to be in for a long time. So if you do that, you're going to be able to navigate these markets uh, far more safely because you're able to maneuver with what the, the current uh, action is. So if the action settles down for an hour or two and you're trading a, a five minute or a 15 minute chart, you should still be able to capture some moves in that point. But just be very, very mindful. It's very, very difficult to predict where they're going to go. So that's why it's, it's advantageous to keep your trades very, very short. All right, the last one we're going to have a look at is uh, crude. Uh, look, this one, yeah, this is one of the biggest rejection candles you're going to see. You must completely ignore it uh, because we know what caused it. It was a, the threat of a, a full-scale war, uh, made oil go well over $100. Um, you know, that that's going to happen every single time there's talk uh, in that vicinity. Of course, down it came, uh, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we already knew that we were at resistance at around that 94, 95 area anyway, so we're not surprised by this, and we're not going to look at that as a, as a God signal or a, you know, a shooting star that is going to be completely um, killing the oil price from here on end. We're going to ignore that wick and look to the left here and use these as our guide. This is a very dangerous trade right now until we get a little bit of more um, news and stabilization on what's going on. On, um, in Europe and you know, basically obviously in Russia, we need to make sure that we're very, very careful with oil. I would I completely ignore it. My honest opinion is to you know, completely ignore it and just leave it alone, uh, watch and see, let it stabilize before we start trading this one again, because this is going to uh, be 
basically driven by news that has got nothing to do with technical analysis okay so that's what you've got to be really really careful with all right so i hope you've had a safe week's trading it's been an interesting one the first couple of days was interesting uh we've seen smaller trends play out but it has been a very very volatile one so i hope that the markets were kind to you and you were able to keep safe have a great weekend and i think we're in for a very interesting trading day and certainly trading week next week with all of the volatility that we've seen so have a great weekend everyone i'll see you all next week